right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Jeremy Chen, who is up north of the border, up in Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada. How are you doing, Jeremy? You know what? If I was doing any better, I think I'd be in San Francisco, but I'm not. So second best, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I said if I was feeling any better, it'd be illegal. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> awesome. uh, and Jeremy is from Jeremy Chen Sales, uh, which helps businesses transform their sales strategies. Uh, whether you're looking to refine sales processes or develop a brand new one, to serve they provide the services that you need. And what we're going to talk today about is I love this subject because telemarketing and cold calling. Because let's face it, Jeremy. Um, conventional wisdom and a lot of experts say oh telemarketing cold calling that's dead <laughs> what say what say you i think it's alive and well and kicking um, it works better than ever and i love when people tell me it's dead because there's just that much less noise for me to go out and compete with so i love it yeah so um so tell me what what is what is your approach because uh, most sales, not to say most, a, a significant amount of salespeople that I interact with and talk to, sometimes they, they all just want to, they just say, cold calling, no, I'm not doing that anymore. That doesn't work. I'm not doing it. I'm over here. I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing these, you know, campaigns. I'm doing all of this. And, and, and they just, the reluctance about uh, picking up the phone uh, just seems to be endemic now. Yeah. It is. I mean, if you look at cold calling, in my opinion, it's like a highly competitive sport, right? I, I say any high-performing athlete, they train every day for it. And if you're not trained, it will show. And, you know, anybody that really refuses cold calling, in my opinion, of course, there's always exceptions to the rules. You see people that do email blasts and will get hundreds of appointments with one email, and that's fantastic. Um, for the rest of us, we have to do the hard stuff, driving, uh, spending windshield time and calling people. And you're going to get a lot of rejection. And I think, well, personally, my belief is the rejection piece is what people don't want to deal with today. They are afraid of failure. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I mean, in some ways, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? Because in some ways over the pandemic over the last few years there's a, there's one thing that a lot of people reported and that was that it was actually easier to get people on the phone than it had been before because a lot of these people were now at home um they were cut off from their you know from their surroundings in the office and so they were more open to actually answering the phone and and uh, and so it would seem that this is even a, probably a better time than ever to indulge in that well, we're coming out of the pandemic now, but mid-pandemic, I would say even this time last year, uh, it was our connection rate over the phone was miserable. I used oh. to be able to tell you very confidently, if we called seven people, um, we would connect with two or three and book one appointment out of it. Um, in the pandemic, that just wasn't the case. You could call 100 people in a day and get nothing. Oh. And and so you know you had to try cell phones and you got to remember that a lot of extensions weren't set up to yeah. you know ping people's cell phones and stuff but still what we found was our conversion rates didn't really drop um you know when we're talking about actual revenue and that was the most important thing for us during the pandemic mm -hmm. yeah and the other thing that i think has also uh crept in now is i mean first it was email because let's face it email is easy and it's you know, it's impersonal to be yep. honest uh, uh and then you say okay now people are yeah getting cell phone numbers but now they're just starting to text people like uh which for me is just another form of email i mean nobody asked you to text them did they and you're and and so now i mean some i know nobody asked you to call them either but it just seems again it's that kind of impersonal intrusion as opposed to you know calling somebody and actually persuading them to have a conversation with you well that's just it like i can tell you know if my conversations between three and five minutes that's about the sweet spot anything more than that we're really talking about things that are not necessary or meant to be in the actual appointment right 
A text mm. to me is a passive way of saying I don't want to do the work. Same with an email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, no, I, to I totally agree with you. So, um, so what, so what do you do that a lot of people aren't doing? And how do? Let me take a step back, okay? Because I think a lot of stuff starts with mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So. What is what is your approach or attitude to cold calling? Why are you not one of these people who says, "Oh, I would do anything if I didn't have to cold call"? <laughs> uh, you know what? I started my career on the phone, um, mm -hmm. and I have a mentor, um, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say his name on here, but whatever. Sure, Doug Bus. absolutely. Yeah, Doug Buss is, uh, you know, one of the greatest sales mentors um, a guy could ever have because when I was starting out. His whole thing to me was just call them. He didn't give me a rhyme or a reason, right? If I wanted to meet with somebody or if I thought, you know, I had a, a good reason to get in front of somebody, his thing was always just call them, right? Um, and I guess that's the mindset that has been ingrained. I don't really think too much. I know that some people will do research on LinkedIn and Facebook and try to figure out this and that and what company they might be at. To me, it doesn't matter. Right. I'll call up for John. And if John's not there, oh, shoot, he retired. Fantastic. He didn't even take me for lunch. Who's the next guy that I need to talk to at that company? Right. <laughs> and that's sort of my mentality in regards to um, cold calling. You got to remember that when you are um, like cold calling to me is sort of an art as much as um, a science. And mm -hmm. you got to remember that it, you're a personality when you're um, making a phone call, right? So if I get told to, you know, fly a kite in the busiest street with the most traffic, uh, it really doesn't, at the end of the day, when five o'clock or 5.30 rolls around, it doesn't matter to me because that was Jeremy, the character. That wasn't Jeremy, <laughs> the human being that has other interests outside of sales, right? So that's the main thing. Yeah, I think that's a I, I think that's a really good point though because uh, yeah, I mean to 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 adopt a persona for a particular uh, activity, I don't think that's been inauthentic. I think that's just um, giving yourself the best opportunity, maybe presenting the best version of you for that particular uh, activity. Absolutely, and to be honest, um, you know, some of my biggest clients could walk past me in the street. Um, tonight and I wouldn't know it was them and they wouldn't know it was me, but yet we spend 45 minutes a day on the phone talking and I know all about their family and they know all about mine, right? Hmm. So I kind of, you know, I struggle when people say you can't build a relationship on the phone because I've had lifelong friends that, again, could walk past me in the street today <laughs> and I wouldn't know it was them. Um, yeah. And it just goes to show how powerful if if you know how to use it, it's there for you. So, yeah. And, and just going back to that bit about you're saying about, you know, getting into the right frame of mind and my, and, and getting into the, what a, the persona and stuff is because I do, I sometimes, I sometimes get calls myself from, you know, cold calls from salespeople. And sometimes they just, from the moment they start talking, they just sound like they already know you're going to say no. <laughs> I mean, that's you get that impression and I haven't even heard what they're going to say. Yet, and I get it from their tone of voice, from everything that they're just I mean, they're all, here's the thing. Sometimes it's almost like they go, oh, no, he picked up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I've had a few of those for sure. Um, you know, when it comes, I think we have kind of spoke about it when it comes to mindset. Uh, that's a. That's a big, big thing. Um, and I think that a lot of companies, you know, some of which I've, I've dealt with, you know, in the past year kind of thing, they'll sort of just throw the, the book at a new hire, a new BDR and set them on the phone and say, you know, make 150 calls and don't let up until you do, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it can be demoralizing when you're not sure of the product, you're not confident in your talk track, um, you know, you're driving out a rusty Honda Civic and the door is about to fall off. Um, and for me, it has always been the things that you tell yourself between your ears when you're driving home, right? I'm no good. 
I should find mm -hmm. another job. I should have been a lawyer, like my dad said. Um, and that will really play on the mindset. So when you get that call and somebody actually picks up, the salesperson doesn't even know how to act because, mm -hmm. you know, they've had nothing but rejection and voicemails all day. So it's really a common thing that we face in the marketplace, especially today with this hybrid work from home yeah. workplace that we have. Yeah, uh, my, my dad wanted me to be an accountant, so I have no regrets <laughs> on that front. <laughs> I, I never my... think, I never finish the day going, oh, I wish I'd have been an accountant. <laughs> no offense to accountants. No hey, offense listen, to accountants. <laughs> I love my accountant. Um, he, he's made me a lot of money and saved me a lot of money. Um, but I think mine wanted me to be an aerospace engineer. And it's so funny because you, you look at it, you got to be a minimum five to seven years to be a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, four or five years to be an accountant, uh, three, four years to be a lawyer. You have to drop out about three times to be a salesperson, don't you? <laughs> and, and so it's always the guy that you see that's compensating for something. You know, he's got a shiny brief. You, you've seen a salesperson before, before you even meet one, right? Because they're overdressed and they're driving the fancy, mm -hmm. the car and they're making the most noise, but they got the less money. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, because it's interesting. Because the, th the thing about it is, uh, is that there's so many people's first job and in e and indeed default careers end up being in sales, not because they wanted to go into sales, because maybe they went to college and did a marketing degree and then discovered, well, there's only like three marketing positions in every company, but there's 50 sales positions. So, well, I'll start off in sales and I'll trans, you know, I'll try and get into marketing. And of course they never do. So sometimes people already start off with a, with a, a kind of negative attitude towards the job that they have. And I yeah. think that's what often undermines people. Well, yeah, it's not their first choice. Um, but then you also get the, the other side of the coin where, you know, I've heard things in my career, like, oh, he's got a great radio voice. He's just going to knock it out of the park in sales, right? Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, he's been in this industry 27 years and he's just going to do fantastic when it comes to our company. What a great hire. And then you get there and then they just bomb it, right? Yeah. So it's always uh, interesting to see that dynamic at place, you know, in an actual workplace. I always chuckle to myself when I see that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, people always tell me I have a face for radio, but that's... Uh, I think you've got the voice entirely. for it, too. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I love this. I could listen to it all day. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so let me ask you then, how do you approach it? So when you when you make a cold call, what do you do differently than many other people? Um, I don't know if it's different. I think that I'm authentically me. Um, I've got nothing to hide. And the one thing I, you know, if you could quantify it is I'm a little bit more transparent, um, almost to a fault, almost to its blunt. Like I will call and say, John, this is a sales call and you're welcome to hang up on me. And that bit alone is enough to disarm somebody because most people will take the alternative route and say, hey, um, is this a solicitation call and try to fish it out? Whereas I'm giving them an out within the first 30 seconds, right? And that in itself is so unique um, and you just don't hear it. It's kind of refreshing. So people will give me the time of day. Um, but funny enough, when I tell people that I actually do this, like other salespeople, they don't want to do it. It's too brash for them. And I understand it's not for everybody, but that I think is, is something to be said. Oh, I, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Um, you know, some years ago I used to, I was running a, a sales consultant, global sales consulting company. And sometimes we go into, you know, these companies to do sales performance improvement. And they'd say, no, we need to customize all of this content because number one, we don't call our people salespeople, okay? They're business <laughs> advisor or whatever. And I'd, I would always, I'd always either say or just think to myself, I'd go, yeah, that's great. But you kind of do know when they interact with somebody that they know, prospects know they're salespeople. So <laughs> you can come up with whatever title you want. I don't really see the point personally. <laughs> But hey, knock yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Again, like, you know, I people, it has that dirty car salesman vibe to it. When you talk, you know, people, I'm a salesperson. They go, oh, you know, you're mm -hmm. one of those. Um, 
and I'm proud of it. You know, that's part of the reason why I do what I do and I deal with the clients that I deal with is, you know, we work with organizations that are proud to sell solutions that their customers actually need, right? As opposed yeah. to, you know, some slimy guy in a three-piece suit from, you know, JC Penny, right? Like yeah. that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the point that you made there, and I think this is a really good one. This is something that we promote an awful lot as well. Is is be proud of this profession because at the end of the day, what is sales? Sales is you're a conduit to help solve a problem, like a product or service, to help that person. And can you help everybody? No. Does it fit for everybody? No. But it when it does, uh, it's a great thing. So you should be proud of your profession. And hopefully you should be proud of the service or solution that you're selling. If you approach it from that point of view, uh, I think then that changes your whole mental attitude. Yeah. Like uh, I've always told you know, whether I was a sales manager or an owner, I've been on both sides and as a rep, right? I've always said, mm -hmm. if you can help me understand from the customer's point of view, if I'm putting on their shoes, how this will actually benefit them, then I will feel good about going into their office and saying, Mr. John, this is the reason why you need our solution or a product or a service or whatever, right? The companies mm -hmm. that generally struggle are the ones that exist just for the sake of existing, right? And I'm sure you've gotten the call and your listeners have gotten the call from the guy in his, you know, mother's basement selling SEO. I probably get that one like <laughs> seven times a day, right? And he's, he's selling it because, it, you know, he, f he found it on Reddit or something and, it, and it was, you know, <laughs> he made one sale and all of a sudden on paper, he's going to make a million tomorrow, right? Yeah. And And that's what puts people in a bad position because they think, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to compete with the giants and uh, I'm going to be the small little guy and everybody's going to give me business. And when it doesn't work out, you know, after three weeks and they're eating ramen noodles, they go, well, that selling mm. stuff just ain't for me. I'm out of here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's like those people who try to sell you lists and they're all Gmail addresses. And oh, uh, my God. Uh, same thing, right? Um, so, so what would you, uh, so if somebody is, if, if, if the says people out there listening, right, or watching, uh, what is your advice? What would you one piece of advice that you would give them to, to, to really embrace cold calling and to maybe if they're, they have a little cold call reluctance, what is the one piece of advice that you would give them to say, Hey, come on, this is going to make a difference to you. Um, I would say to them that you have to have a mindset of failure is not actual failure. Um, mm -hmm. And it's part of the actual thing uh, that you just, you just go through it and you get used to it. Um, and to help prepare for that mindset, I would say, pick your number. Everybody's got a number, especially in sales, and they generally know what it is, right? And I would say to myself, you know, if I had 10 or 20 million liquid in my bank account and I can log in on my app and see it on my phone, am I really mad if John tells me no? Am I going to think about that at 5.30 when I'm eating my steak dinner? Probably not. Um, yeah. And if you can master that, just saying, if I really had $20 million, do I care if this guy says no to me? Um, I think a lot of people would be in a lot better position than just worrying about, oh, John, John hung up on me. Because I can tell you for... <laughs> fact <laughs> that I have called people who have told me no and then refined my pitch, called them back 25 minutes later and they told me yes, right? So, <laughs> and they didn't remember me calling them. So <laughs> there you go, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, if you <laughs> That's get your amazing. ego out of the way. Yeah, I mean, look, I think if you can, as a salesperson, get your ego out of the way, you'll be in a pretty good position. Yeah, and and I guess as your as your countryman, uh, Mr. Gretzky once said, "What was it? You miss you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take." Isn't that one of his? Exactly right. You know, you step up to bat ninety nine times, swing and a miss, and the one time you hit it makes your career and makes the game. Yeah, right, and it makes it all yeah. worth it. So, absolutely. Um, so well. It Sorry, well, listen, uh, Jeremy, this has been great. We're just uh, coming up against the end of our time here, but this sure. is great. Um, all of Jeremy's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. 
Yeah, so we go into organizations. It uh, doesn't really matter what organization uh, that uh, you're in. We deal with your sales teams on a one-to-one -one basis. Okay, so if you're struggling with prospecting specifically over the phone, um, getting deals to cross the finish line, um, you know, even qualifying prospects, that's something that we help with. So, you know, if you're struggling in, in any of those, please feel free to reach out to us. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, as you heard from what Jeremy said, I mean, he'll, he'll, cure, he'll cure your cold calling uh, phobias. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could bottle it and sell it like Benelin, but unfortunately, <laughs> I got to do it one to one and I'm glad to do it. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Listen, thanks, Jeremy. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Perfect. Thanks for having me.